Okay, are we on? I hope we are on. Yeah, we're just testing our microphones right at the moment. I think we're good. And I'm just going to pop this camera back just a tiny bit. Uh, after last week, and I thank you guys so much uh, for joining me last week, even though we had a real rocky, rocky uh, little moment with um, actually 20 minutes worth of bad internet connection. I think everybody had a bad day that day when it came time to, uh, you know, uh, even some of the guys in England were having troubles on that particular day. So it must have been pull of the moon or something. I'm Nettie Kay, by the way, and I'm so glad you have chosen to join me tonight. We're going to be having some more fun with old photographs. I'm going to be using uh, some photographs of my uh, grand, my grandmothers, and I want to emphasize everybody. You know what's happening these days? First off, I've got to show you my cool little thing here. I've got a, a remote control, and I have this uh, button that I'm going to push. There we go, and I have two cameras rolling. So if this one doesn't work in the long run, if we get all of a sudden just chop, chop, chop and have a, have a big problem, I can go back in and use my big, huge studio camera and I'll probably use both of them if it's really good anyway. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about. Um, our, the, our photographs, where are our photographs right now? in our cameras and in our computers. Uh, and where are our kids going to find them? My, my family photographs are some of the most precious things to me. They might not be important to you, but maybe they will be to somebody. I've got this one is um, my great grandfather, Papa Frank. And then on the back, I have my grandmother and her two brothers, Joe and Bill Elsis, uh, with their guitars and singing and doing whatever they were doing. And uh, these are really precious to me. So what's happened to your family photos? If you haven't taken time to print off the really important ones at least, and put them in maybe a little notebook. See, I've just got this one uh, in a little plastic sleeve so I don't get paint all over it. But it really is an important thing to, um, you know, to make sure that somebody can find them. I got the big box of my grandmother's photos um, when she passed, and I promised every family, which there were six families, uh, six kids in her family, that I would make it my job to make copies of these photos for each family. And I did. I did. I went through and I blew up some of them, and some of them I just copied and sent in little packages intermittently to each family member over a year or two. It took a long time. And so um, they all each have photos that they can copy to and give to their grandchildren and their great grandchildren. And so that, you know, so forth and so on. So do that this week and then paint them if you can. All right. I wanted to show you our last week's uh, painting. I, I was so stunned that so many people watched. I think we had close to like 300 people uh, that watched that, uh, that painting lesson last week which had this girl this is my uh this is my mom and so i painted this uh and we painted it on a white canvas and we we did that kind of tonal thing and then today i put a yellow tone over the top and then i can add some whites and darks to it at some point but we're not going to do that today okay i'm going to do something a little bit different a little bit different okay so now I've got this canvas. I'm going to grab my, my photo right here, and I'm going to kind of decide where things are going to go on here. And uh, I'm going to do a little, little drawing thing with a paintbrush, not with a pencil. You can use a pencil if you want, not a problem. Uh, and I'm going to use a little medium. Test my brush out here, a little bit of medium. And, oops, and I'm going to get into a little bit of burnt sienna. That's kind of a brick color. I've got this right down here on my little palette. Here's my colors, okay, including uh, an ivory black, a, um, a burnt sienna, white, and then I've got a gold ochre. And this is toned underneath with acrylic, you guys, so it's dry. That's the main thing. 
So I've got kind of a light middle tone on here. And then I've got a gold ochre and uh, I think I've got a raw. No, I don't. Okay. And I've got in here, guess what this is? <laughs> this, I, I went to paint last night and realized I'd use pliers on one of my big tubes of paint and it had holes in it. Oh man, it was all over the place. So I cut it wide open and I put it in an empty tube, which you can buy empty tubes so that you can put different mixtures in or you can put your paint in it into a smaller tube and uh, not have to wear it. Yeah, I, boy, did I wear it yesterday. I had turquoise too. Mm, not good, not good. So we'll use some of that as well. All right, that's just crazy. I know we're a little bit crazy today. So now I'm going to come in with my raw, uh, raw, here we go, burnt raw, burnt raw, um, burnt sienna. I should just call it what it is, brick. Okay, but you wouldn't be able to find it in the store. And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to say, all right, top of his hat, I don't want it to go any farther than that. And how far down can you see? Oh, I can barely see the bottom of that. Oh, well, we'll, we'll just get down there and goof around when you're not looking. All right. And then uh, I'm looking at this about halfway mark is where uh, his hands are. Now you can graph this. You could make a graph on this plastic sheet. Yeah, you could make it. And then, so I'm going to say up here about halfway. That's my halfway mark. And so my halfway mark is right about where his hands are right about like that. And his sleeve is like this and I want to see if I can kind of get the, the size of it. Uh, you know, I, the first time I did one of these, <laughs> picture of Papa Frank, <laughs> I accidentally, uh, I, I did the drawing all out in charcoal and his feet wouldn't fit on the bottom. Has that ever happened to you? I think uh, it probably happened to a lot of us. So I'm going to raise that up just a tiny bit and I'm going to get his hat going. Anyway. I don't have, these are, are pictures that came from my mother's family. And some of them I have from my, my father's, not my father's, my, um, my husband's family. I don't have hardly any photos of my father's, my actual father's family. And uh, I'm hoping someday I will, I'll have some. But right now I, I don't have any. I've got a few uh, photos that I've taken of my grandmother and uh, that's about it um, so I'm I'm longing for something historical from them now I've got I'm just adding a little bit of black in here just so you can see it a little bit so I'm seeing if this is the right right size and then I'm realizing I've got his shoulders way way out I'm starting with that hat I don't want it too big now if I go like this and I say the hat 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 and so I'm, I'm guessing, making some guesses. You can barely see his face. It's really in shadow right there. You can, I, you know, the, a lot of my students do graphing, you know, because they're left brainers. Okay. What's the difference between a left brainer and a right brainer? That's not a joke. Okay. Not a joke. I'm doing some study on left brain. What do you think you are? Are you a left brain or a right brain? Well, you know, we use both of our sides of our brain. We don't just use, we don't go walking around with one side of our brain hanging over. No, we have to use both sides in order to do that. In order to paint, we have to understand line and angle and perspective and all that, which is part of, uh, part of our, our uh, left brain, which is the analytical side. And then we need the artsy side, which is the right side, in order to be more creative or spontaneous. Okay, so this is a little bit of both. This is a little bit of both. Uh, let's see if I can get this hat up here. It's not going to be perfect. Um, that's the right brain part of me going, it's not going to be perfect. But um, yeah, you don't, uh, we use this creative, if we can do it nice and loose like this, it feels more like art and less like like illustration. And how I'm, I'll, I'll say, say this, it's like the difference between newspaper reporting, <clears throat> pardon me for my scratchy voice, the difference between newspaper reporting and poetry, okay? We have, have this ability, once you understand things a little bit, to, to uh, begin to allow yourself to 
be more poetic in your art. And that's when nobody's looking. Okay, now I've got everybody looking right now. But but once you get that and you allow yourself to kind of do these kind of gestural type uh, drawings to get a bit of what's going on here, um, it just loosen up and your, your head is going back and forth, back and forth like you're driving, okay? You're not looking at the steering wheel. Where's the steering wheel when it comes to art? Well, the steering wheel is, uh, let me think. It's if I'm too focused on <clears throat> my painting and I'm not looking at my reference or my model sitting there, uh, that's like looking at the steering wheel, okay? And where are you going to go when you look at your steering wheel? You're going to go off the road. So really, you're doing that whole glancing thing for any of you that drive, uh, where you learn to look in the rearview mirror and then you look at the road. If you stare at either one of those too long, something bad's going to happen. Okay, so you want to be able to glance back and forth. And the faster you can glance back and forth, the better chance you are going to have in figuring out what's going on. Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to understand how this all fits. And uh, let's see, this kind of comes over and then there's a knee here. And then I've got this kind of a fold in the pants. And then how does that relate to the elbow? Well, let's see. Oh, I see it kind of comes in a little bit like this. Now see, I'm not worried about making a mistake. You know, it's not the end of the painting. You're just kind of getting an idea of where things are. You can do this with crayons. You can do it with your, uh, you know, with just a sketchbook. 15 minutes a day, guys. Tell me if you do it. I'm, I'm getting after my, uh, my students who are adult currently. I did have a, a kid's, um, kids class for a while or kids school called We Da Vinci. And I uh, might have to get that one back going again. But I have this, um, this thing where I want my, my students to do drawing every day. All right, that's their assignment, do drawing every day. And, and it's not a lot, it's just 15 minutes a day, okay? Can you find 15 minutes? You know, you could do it even at the coffee shop. Get your coffee going, spy up over the top of your cup and just sketch the person across the room. They don't, they don't notice. Well, if they do, you got to be careful. But uh, nonetheless, okay. So now I'm just doing this and then I'm going to come down and say, all right, here's, <laughs> he's going to look pigeon-toed, I have a feeling, because I'm standing off to the side always. Um, let's see if I'm going to just give this a line here. He's sitting on an old cellar door that's up next to a house. So I've got this house going on here, and I've got a ha the, the, the lines on the house are going this way. And uh, this is the one where, where my mommy, when she was two, is standing over here somewhere. Oh, there's another guy over here, and then she's standing over here. And then um, that, uh, what hap is happening is that, that uh, one of the men is fixing her fixing her little basket or Easter basket. It's just so cute. But I love how cool these guys are. It's so interesting. I had one great grandfather and they would hang out. They don't hang out together, but they were, they would have to be together on uh, various occasions. And one super cool. Okay. Really cool. Just had swagger about him, you know, and the other one was very, um, very religious, very conservative, stood differently, had his pants tied up a little bit differently, would wear a suit and a tie, and wore his hat slightly different. It wasn't cocked on his head. It was, you know, properly, the fedora was properly on to the head. And uh, the contrast between those two, they'd be out playing, uh, you know, playing croquet or whatever they did at that stage. Now I'm going to see how big the space is. And then I'm going to go like that, and then we'll bring that leg in just a little bit. But yeah, just you could tell what kind of people each one of them were by the way they stood. I don't remember them. I, I really don't. Um, I never met them. But you just knew who they were by the way they, they carried themselves. And so if you can get that, now I've got this foot. I'm going to drop it maybe down a little ways, and I'm, I'm going to put that line. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to find where they all connect. 
So this is like this, like this, like this, and then this foot comes out. I gotta talk to myself just a little bit. And we'd get that with, from the kids. Miss Nettie, do you always talk to yourself? Yes. If you're not listening, I'm talking to myself. That's what I thought I was doing last week when I wasn't sure. We had, what happened was I had this yellow light. It would go yellow and red, yellow and red. And I'm thinking, that's not right. It's supposed to be green. We're learning. We're really learning. And it's, uh, it's kind of fun, you know, to, it's not fun when you don't get it right. It's really annoying. Okay. So I'm going to pull that ankle out and I can keep correcting this. Um, you know, the old masters, they didn't really sit there with an eraser and go, oops, I made a boo-boo. No, they would be just drawing my, um, oh my goodness, on, on the, uh, what is it called? Eric Rhodes uh, Art School Live. I was so excited. What was it, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday they had Daniel Green, not Daniel Green, who am I saying? David LaFell. Daniel Green was my other teacher. He passed away last year. That would be quite the miracle. But uh, David LaFell was on, and he's 92 years old. He's my was one of my teachers 20 years ago. And he was still giving these wonderful um, uh, teachings about, uh, and you can still watch it. You can go back on and, and watch that. It was a live broadcast, and it was so wonderful to see him. And uh, he was talking about, we're, we're drawing because we're drawing. We're not worried about, you know, doing every little line just right. We're just trying to get the feel of this. That's what we're doing, trying to get the feel of it. And I uh, hope I've got this right. I'm looking in my monitor going, oh, okay, I've got a monitor here and one way over there. And that helps me to figure out whether or not I've got it right or not. So here we go. I've got this, this, and this. Now, uh, any vertical lines are always vertical. Okay, what does that mean? It means that if you're doing like telephone poles and they're disappearing into the distance, they don't all of a sudden start turning like this unless one of them's, you know, falling over. They're always straight up. They don't, but they get shorter and shorter and smaller as they go into the distance. All right but they don't ever just suddenly turn like that. They don't turn, they are always straight up and down. So if you're doing a house that's not falling down, you would do them straight up and down. The straight up and down lines are always straight up and down, and the other lines are can be of different angles. But the these lines, these lines right here on my, my little cellar door, I've got this going this direction, and then I'm gonna connect that up that line is an angle because the cellar door is at an angle, okay? But the, the boards holding it up are up and down like that. So I'm gonna try to make sure that those are up and down like that, okay? Anything else can just be whatever, you know, kind of thing. One of the things that I wanted to try tonight is to uh, see if I can, oh, and then I've got the shadow, is to see if I can get, um, some uh do some wipe out for you with this as the dry underpainting and then putting a dark cover you're going to just crook when you see what i'm going to do next okay i want to make sure can you see that all right yeah okay just double checking so now i'm going to put my little dinky brush away i'm going to throw it over here and i want to get a pretty good sized hang on i'm going to get a good sized one over here You know, I didn't major in ergonomics, <laughs> meaning having things where they need to be, Lord. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to get into my medium. I'm going to get into some black. I wish I had a little bit of dark blue. I don't know where that one went. I'm making a darker tone value right now, and I'm going to do something crazy. All right, I'm going to come in and... Uh, where do I want to try this? I want to try this. I'm going to patch this in in a dark value here. And so now I'm going to find, look how fat that brush is. Thank you, Daddy. Um, these were, this is size 16, Winton, uh, Windsor Newton, short, flat, bright, fine hog hair. 
and I, I put a little black and a little bit of our burnt sienna and then I'm going to put this in and find those shapes like that and then I've got to go in like this and then come down and find a little corner down here now say for instance I'm well once I get this figured out I got to make sure everything is in but uh, I've got the collar collar kind of comes like this sometimes with these old pictures you can't see everything either I know that but now I'm double checking and I'm going okay that arm needs to come out farther okay easy to figure out and then I'll come in like this and then I've got the leg and then I'm realizing that knee needs to come farther out so I put that knee farther out easy to fix easy to fix let's see I want to make sure I don't lose track of things. It doesn't matter. Okay, I can put this in like this, and you're going, what in the world is she doing? Okay, I'm putting it in like this, and then I'm going to put this down here, and I've got a little shadow happening over here, and then I'm going to put a little bit of thinned out paint over into the arm. Isn't this crazy? Yeah, it is. It's a little crazy. That's all right. And there's the little collar and this part right in here. Now, here's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I'm now going to take a uh, paper towel and I'm going to find where the arm is right here. And I can wipe out the area where, look at that, where that leg, see that? I have an instant fold right there instantly i've got a an area now where the pant leg is is sticking out it just took a little wipe with the rag that's all it can make it even more so where the light is coming from and so i lift that up just like we did with the little girl okay my little mummy and then i'm going to go like that and then of course that that shadow will go in over here like this looks like he's wearing bell bottoms but you get the idea sometimes when you're doing this kind of art it's so uh fun that you don't even want to i'm going to move that shadow over a little bit i'm realizing this leg really needs to move over so because i need to move that i'm just going to wipe off the area that i don't want now i could have covered this entirely in dark paint and started it that way i thought about that okay <clears throat> But I didn't. Okay, so this is the middle tone. Uh, and now I'm going to pick it up with the rag. I'm going to come in and go, okay, here's a little part on the hat. And this is the dark. And there's a little dark shadow there. His face is in kind of shadow like that. There's a little bit of a shadow here. And we go like this. I'm going to bring that arm out. And that knee is still out there. Now let's do it again over on this side. Can you see this leg? Yeah, you can. Okay, good. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to paint. I'm going to make sure it's in the right spot. There's the sleeve. It gets a little messy, doesn't it? And then here is the, the, the pant leg. And I'm going to paint that whole pant leg in that middle color. And I'm realizing it's going down like that. He's got little tiny ballerina shoes here. I better give him some serious, serious feet. You know, I have my, my Papa Frank's um, fedora hat. I'm pretty sure it's his or Uncle Bill's. I don't know which one. Uh, but it they had smaller heads. <laughs> they fit me perfectly. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I can, I can wear them. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and I can take my little rag and I can find that... Just by putting my finger inside the paper towel like that. It's a little messy. I should be wearing gloves, I know. Um, and then the sun is coming from over here. It's coming from my, whatever this side is, and shining in that direction so that the shadows are kind of coming across like that. Okay. And then I put, I, I wipe that off like that. And I've got this, the top of the boot, top of the shoe is like that. There's the shadow that comes over here, and they're not, it's not perfect. I think I need a little more space. Yeah, a little more space here. 
And then I can go back in and reline it. Okay, I can re take my, my smaller paintbrush and then recheck my drawing. So here is the sleeve going up there. And then this is really dark right in here. And then you can carve out the, uh, the collar. It's a bit dark in here, even though that's a white shirt, <clears throat> even though it's a white shirt. And there's a little somewhere where that hand's going to end up. Okay, and that's really dark. <clears throat> wow, I got a froggy. Guess what I did today? Huh? Like I should be proud of this. I went down to the DMV in Cascade, Idaho. And I got... I got my handicap parking tags, you know, that you hang on your window so that, because I can't walk in the morning and I can't walk if I've been driving. So my family finally said, hey, go get that. So I'm all excited because now I can kind of pull up and, and uh, unload all my stuff without limping in and uh, nobody has to carry me. Isn't that great? Yeah. So that was a good thing. That was a really good thing today. All right, so here, here we go. Now let's go back in with the little pointy brush. That kind of looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah, I like it. What I should do is just spritz it with, uh, you know, turpentine or something or splash. Don't do that without wearing a mask, but put a little turpentine and have it just dripping all over. That'd be fun. Okay, now we'll go back in with our dark tone again, the burnt sienna a little bit of black and i'm going to come in and restate now i'm really looking at it okay really looking at it and i'm going to restate it and say okay there goes the collar and there's the little thing on the easter suit and then here's the side of his body it's only about that far there I don't think these guys were really big, but they sure were cool. Okay. And then I'm going to have that, that. And so the arm is going to be out like that. I missed that by a mile. Oh, I missed it by a mile. This is how you fix it all. And you kind of get more stuff on your brush and you fix it. And you bring that elbow way out. And bring that over here. Give him a little bit more room. I think the leg is almost in the right position. We'll see. You got to practice a lot, you know. <laughs> you really got to practice a lot. Okay, now I'm going to come back in with my little rag. And kind of morph that in a little bit like that. Now this part, this shadow right here, is super dark. It's super dark right here. This is, a, I know, now I'm saying to myself, I'm going, where are the darkest darks at this stage? Okay, right under the collar, right there. And then I have, of course, a few little dippy dee doo dah things there. And then there's a little thing and the knee and the, the leg and the thing. And blah, 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 blah. I'm talking to myself. All right, and then something that goes kind of like that let's pull this up just a little farther wow yeah they're kind of really sprawled out there that's better that's better so anyway it's kind of fun you can almost stop at any point and go oh that's done not okay <laughs> okay and then there's this part all right and then i'm going to find where his arm is by kind of making this area a little bit more dark and there is that area there and the arm. I think we're getting it on here. I think it's pretty close. I'm not worried about facial features on this. That's the neat part. That elbow comes down, comes over the knee, and then it goes like this. So I'm drawing and, and uh, also painting at the same, well, not at the same time, but I am kind of working the entire piece. There's the the little part of the pant leg that I'm I'm almost certain of. So ask yourself, what am I sure of? You know, what am I sure of? Well, I'm not sure much of anything, but um, my guesses are pretty good. They get better. 
some days are better than others. Okay, and then I'm going to come underneath where I think, and I'm going to match this angle up here, where I think this is going. And uh, I hope I'm not off too far. And then here, that boot's going to go down even farther. Now I extend it. See, it, you have to give yourself room to grow. Whoa, yeah, you do. Because if you don't, your guy's going to run right off the bottom of the thing. Got to be a better way of this. There we go. Okay, here's the, the corner of where the shadow is in his sleeve. Hands in the right place. This hand's coming down here like this. And yeah, I've got his, his legs just a little too close together. So now, correction, correction. If you can't adjust, don't paint. Yeah, you have to be able to adjust and not panic or freak out and go, oh my gosh, it's terrible. No, that's called negative painting. Well, there's another negative painting, which I'm going to show you right now. Uh oh, there goes Papa Frank right under the table. Better get him. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm back. So, what am I talking about? Negative painting. Well, this is negative shape painting. All right, negative shape painting, meaning I'm going to now take a clean paper towel. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take out the area that has the light right there. That's the negative shape that will define the positive shape right there. Okay. And then I'll go over here and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take a little bit more out of that leg. So I have room for these fingers. And then a little bit of that. So I'm taking out paint and the negative shape is the shape around an object. This is the negative shape around the pant leg right there. It isn't, oh, I hate that pa painting part of the pant leg. No, that's not it. And you know, <laughs> that's, that's just being crabby. Okay. It's not the negative shape. There we go. Now I'm pushing that in. See, it's starting to come together. And then that's the that dark part. I think this leg is going to end up kind of just falling off the, yeah, it really needs to go white right off the side of the canvas. That's okay. We'll just put his knees a little closer together. That's not a problem. There. Okay. Good. Now, let's see. I like this part the best, don't you? I love that. That's really cool. Now I'm going to dip into my medium a little bit. And it's good to use some thinner uh, for the lights. And then you can pull that out and it starts getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And then this is lighter and lighter. I'm going to push that knee all the way over. Wow. Sometimes when you're off center like this, you have no idea what it's going to look like. He's going to have bowed legs. That's fun. Okay. Now I can come in at this stage and I can uh, continue to, uh, I'm going to pick up some, some white. And I, now I can go up here and say, all right, what's happening on this hat? I'm going to make this nice and light right there. And I will put some lighter color onto the paint, onto the painting. And and put the lights in, okay? So I've kind of removed some of the lights, but I haven't painted it in. This is now the positive painting part of just putting that in. I've got this enormous brush, and I can kind of now go back. I've got the middle tone background. I've got the, the light color paint. And now I'm looking for the lightest lights just to kind of play around with it a little bit. There's a piece of his shirt right there. That is in shadow there. And then I have the jacket coming down like this. And it goes kind of like that. Okay. A little triangle. This is very light right here. Fairly light. It's in the light. And then I'm going to come up here like this, put some light there, put some light on the top of the shoulder where it hits. 
in a little bit here where the sleeve is. Crazy, isn't it? Okay, and then the hand. Whoa, that hand is still hanging way down here. And there's some light, light, light. And then we can patch in all of that and start playing around a little bit. Okay. Favorite part, favorite part. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here. Now I know this is nice and light. So now I'm going to come in behind that sleeve and I'm going to cut out around it. This is just my style, you guys. I don't know if anybody else paints like this, but <laughs> I just kind of like doing it. So here's the the cellar door that's going to set off this leg right here. And there's also a piece of that beautiful light down here that goes at this angle. Like that. And then it goes down to about the top of the boot kind of thing. Oh, goes straight up and down. There and then down. There's a shadow back in here. So I've got a shadow. And I'm going to go and take that all the way off like that. And then this part up here is pretty light too because it's still uh, the uh, cellar door goes all the way up to there. So let's get that put in. So I'm working the negative space and the positive space. And that goes up that way and it goes down that way like that. And I've got this in full a full color painting above my mantle that I did years ago of this image. That it's one of my favorite paintings. I've I've kept it going for a long time. Okay. And then we're going to come back in and this is kind of in shadow right there. Not that shadow. Ooh, mercy. I have to warm that up. Kind of a shadow and I'm going to put in some nice warm uh color into that in a second. There. Okay. See that nice warm color? That's the burnt sienna into the shadow. And that shadow kind of comes down. Looks like that foot goes even farther down. Oh my gosh. A lot of guessing today. A lot of guessing. And then here the pant kind of goes like that. Like that. I think I have them in kind of a, an aqua green. Not aqua. What am I saying? like an, uh, an olive green suit in my uh, living room. Yep. There's that, the top of the boot. I keep shoving it down. That's why I started them up so high. You know, I do that just to show you that none of us start out perfect. Okay. That boot goes way down. Okay, way down here. There, that's looking cool. All right, little shadow here, little shadow over here. A shadow. Okay, wait. This is like that. And then we have a shadow that happens like that. It's a weird shadow. And then it goes into the boot. Okay. Well, sort of like that. Okay. Anybody having fun out there? Oh my goodness. Are we being silly tonight? It's just fun. I just love it. Okay. Now I'm going to add some more paint onto the arm. And... I've got it kind of in a, a little bit lighter, but not too light. And then I'm going to wipe it out again. There's the hand. hand. So the main thing that you got to realize is, I mean, look at this big fat brush. You're using, uh, most of the time you guys are using too small a brush. Okay. You're using way too small a brush. And so it's hard to get all of the well, it's, it takes forever, number one. It takes forever when you're painting with a tiny, teeny, tiny brush. But um, on top of that, you know, you, you get into the details so much and then you don't have, have enough, uh, you know, you can't play around and sculpt it. I'm throwing clay around with this paint. It feels like I'm, I'm adding paint to it. I'm subtracting paint to it. And it's like playing with Play-Doh. Oh, I need more for that dinosaur head. I'm going to add some more to it. So I just keep shifting it around. You know, you can be more perfect perfectionist if you want. In fact, I would recommend it <laughs> instead of this kind of thing. But uh, yeah, you can you can do that if you want. That's all right. I'm going to get one more. Let's see. We're going to pull off. Now I'm going to pull off. Uh, where am I going to pull off? Okay. 
I kind of want to pull this off a little bit and put in a, a, a feeling of that suit. I need a clock in here too. I have no idea how long I have been on, but it's okay. Tell, somebody tell me to stop when I need to. Oh, hey, I think I've got like 20 more minutes. Yeah. I do hope you make it to the end. We are trying so hard to get our numbers up and uh, and get um, get up to the 4,000 hour mark. That's the main thing. But right now we're still sitting at about 2,700 or something like that. So try to watch it to the end. I'll love you forever, or at least that day. Okay, now here's the negative space right here. Here's what I'm talking about. Okay, now I'm gonna cut out this shape that I can definitely see. Cut that shape out. Whoops, now I need another towel. Got dropsies today, a little bit. Little dropsies. I'm gonna drop the whole roll this time. I just found out I have something called old people plantar fasciitis. Anybody else got that? Ugh. On top of rheumatoid, I ended up with plantar fasciitis. I'm like, what is that? Okay. That means when you get up in the morning, you have to stand up for several minutes before you are, and you have to put your boots on to go to the bathroom. Okay. You have to put boots on to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. You're not supposed to step down on the floor. No. Anyway, it'll get better or it won't. Hmm. It's just life. Isn't it fun? Just so much fun. All these challenges that make us who we are. You know, we just have to kind of embrace them and go, wow, doesn't that make me an interesting person? Plantar fasciitis. It's like bunions, you know. Jeez okay some of the names of these things are kind of funny aren't they the different things that people get oh my goodness you have what Sjogren's syndrome how do you spell that you know how you spell Sjogren's syndrome oh my goodness who can tell me S J O G show grins anyway s-j-o-g-r-e-n-s something like that it's it's a crazy word okay i'm goofing off okay now uh, let's go back in with a little bit more i think it's coming don't you think i think it's coming together he looks a little spooky that's all i do want to get test out my new little um my <laughs> This is so slippery. I'm going to test out my, my little tube that I made. Isn't that cool? Guess what this is? That is a honey. You know, you get the little jars with the honey things. This is a honey spoon with a piece of wood that has little rings around it. And it fit just perfectly inside this tube to shove the paint down. That worked out good. Okay. This is my transparent orange. Hey. It worked. Yes. Always trying to find new things. Today I, I invented a two-sided cane because I needed two sides to the handle so I could just do it like a jackhammer down the stairs. Yeah. That's awesome. Necessity is the mother of invention. I've got some fun tools that um, one of my friends that is a metalist, metallurgist or whatever. Anyway, he works with metal and he designed me some special tools to open large uh, tubes of paint. I appreciate that. My assistant, Chance, who moved away. Boo. Okay. All right. Back to our, our project. All right. Now, uh, I've got this light. <clears throat> I don't like this color. I don't like that color, so I'm going to pull that off. I don't mind its tonal value, but I don't like the color of the tone. So I'm taking that off, and I'm going to patch in that orange color like this. I'm going to restain it, and I'm going to make it into a warmer color. Okay, that makes me happy. That makes me happier. And then I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to take my darker value again which is the uh, 
burnt sienna with a little bit of black. You can use burnt sienna and blue. I think that's what we used the last time. And then we have the, the dark here. This is the, one of the more interesting little things that I'm almost certain of is this angle right here. You ask yourself this, okay, what am I, what am I sure of? And put that down, you know, put down what you think you're sure of. And then later, if you want, you can adjust it if you, if you screw it up. But meanwhile, yeah, that I'm sure of. I'm sure of this, except for that. Okay. That's a shadow part there. And then I know that there's a sleeve somewhere that goes like this up. Don't lie to yourself. We do lie to ourselves a lot. We say, oh, that's good enough. Oh, I think it goes like that. That's close enough. Have you ever talked to yourself like that? Oh, that's close enough. And then everything else goes all wonky because <laughs> you haven't got a clue. You know what? Uh, it's like you, you thought it was right, but it's like, oh, that's good enough. No, no, no. Make sure that you um, don't lie to yourself. It, you know, you can, you can get close and then you think, okay, is that correct? No. Okay, I'm going to get it closer. Here's some fingers. Like, I don't want to just put my hand on there and draw draw circles or, or draw, like, you know, when your mommy did that when you were little and you put your hand on the paper and they just drew a picture around it. That's not how we do hands. No. You remember that? Get the piece of paper out in the middle of church and and draw your fingers around it. And I got to count them. One finger, two fingers, three fingers. That one kind of goes this way. Four fingers. And what is it with hands? Okay, think about this too. I got paint all over mine. Ooh, I need to wear gloves. Okay, your hand, um, the palm of your hand from the, the bottom of your palm to where the fingers start is about the same distance as the length of your fingers, okay? So we often make our fingers either too short or too long but they are generally right where they connect uh, the same length. So for instance, I got to put this down for a sec. Okay, we might do one on hand someday, but I can go like this. So I'm going to look at uh, my fingers, if I could do this, and I go from the where the palm starts to say the middle finger right there, uh, if I can do that. And I go, except for mine's broken. Oh, well. Um, and I'm going to measure that like that. Okay, let's see if that's true. And then I go from here to here. Now, generally, if my finger was straightened out, let's try one that's not broken. Okay. Um, I'm going to go from here to here. And then I'm going to take that measurement and I'm going to go from here to here. Okay. So your finger, each finger is going to be about the same length as the palm of your hand. And your hand is, I don't want to touch my face, is roughly up until to right about here where your, your skull starts turning back or where your hairline should be. Your, your hand is about the size of your face. So if you're doing a figurative piece and the hands are just really, really small all of a sudden and they kind of look like, you know, um, not pterodactyl, you know what I mean, Tyrannosaurus Rex hands. Uh, it's because they're not as big as the face. Okay, so we want to make sure that your hands are about the size of the face if, if they were wide open and facing you. So I'm looking here and I'm going to measure his hand out like this and it's slightly folded a little bit. But I'm going to measure that and I'm going to say, all right, if he had his face, yeah, that's about right. Um, his head would be in underneath there. I can't really see it. But yeah, his hands are about the right size. They're the size of, of his face. I really hope that helped you a little bit. Tell me if it did. Write something in the comments below. We need to make sure that, uh, you know, we're, we're helping you. I want to make sure that we're helping you. Okay, so now let's go back in again. Where I put that picture. All right. And then I'm going to come back in. Now I've got that hand to where I think I like it. And the and then uh, I'm going to darken that up a little bit. So I know where that finger is. And then this hand 
starts a little ways away from that. This was the, the tough combination here of trying to figure out where things go. So I have a bit of the pant leg here. The jacket is going to come out like that. Oh, all the pieces are starting to fit. You guys get excited. Isn't that exciting when it kind of starts coming together? Yeah. Anyway, paint loose, everybody. Try it. Try it. Got that. Jumping around a little bit. There's that. There's that. Ooh, he's got little skinny arms. Okay. Got to give him some muscles here. All right, then I'm going to come in over here and I've got to widen out a sleeve. Frank had uh, kind of more of that cool baggy, baggy clothes a little bit, but they just look good on him, you know. He looked like he, you know what he did? Um, he lost his wife. I'm going to tell you some stories here. She died of breast cancer in her 40s and left him with three kids including my grandmother and uh who else and my and my two my grandmother's two brothers and so it was really sad and they were i think they lived in like i don't know where but it was it was not a good place so he moved them all out to uh idaho and um then and so, and he raised those kids and his health wasn't really very good. I don't know what he had going on, but it wasn't good. I'm giving him a mitten here, but uh, so his wife dies and and here are these, you know, he's trying to make a living to try to uh, keep things going and and so he and his sons eventually they they developed a gardening um, a gardening company. And they designed, um, I think they designed this big place called Kurtz Park. Or no, maybe it was the Boise Park. Anyway, they did a lot of that kind of architectural landscaping before it was called that. And they did very well. They did very well. I've seen some, uh, you know, he, he did all right. It was a lot of work and his, I think his body was not quite up to uh, doing it. A lot of the stuff that he needed to do at some point. I'm just going to fill that in a little bit. So he had a really rough, 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 rough life. And, uh, but he did it, you know. And I wished I had a chance to really know him a little bit. I feel like I know him. I really do. All right, now I'm just pedaling around here. I really, I really realized that, wow, this, well, no, this is about right. Okay, that's about right. That's the edge of the leg there. And then this one kind of comes up like that. And the leg actually goes right off, right off the canvas. You don't want to do that if you're really painting something professionally. You don't want to have it just kind of going off the canvas like that. But uh, today, that's the way it is. All right, so I've got his leg down here. I've got I'm going to make sure you guys can even see that. Yeah, you can. Okay, good. Anyway, so, um, you know, families are interesting, aren't they? I, I think about how many uh, women died of breast cancer and stuff because they just, they were out in the middle of, I think they were out in the middle of Nebraska. That's where they were. They lived in a sod house out in Nebraska. And so, you know, you get sick, you just didn't complain. And so all of a sudden you realize all of a sudden you got something really bad going down and, uh, and it's too late to fix. Not that they had anything in the 1940s to fix. I, I don't know what they did back then, but it wasn't good. You didn't have a lot of options. You know, you didn't have all the chemotherapy and, you know, mastectomies and drugs that we have to, to fix it. Um, and still there are women that are dying of breast cancer. You know, if you don't uh, get it get it ahead of time, you got to be careful. It's not like you can fix everything. Okay, now that doesn't connect up with that. That's great. Okay, I want that to go like that. So now I'm going to go down here and put that. i got to connect this with this. Everything is going to make sense. Do, 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 do. That'll have a little shadow behind it. Let's do a shadow. So he's, he's a pretty cool guy. 
I think they may have been uh, musicians. There were a lot of musicians in my family. A lot of musicians. Yeah. But it was interesting to find um, little things about him in some of the stuff that we discovered. It was like um, you, you found little uh, newspaper clippings about his, you know, in uh, advertising his, his lawn and garden kind of stuff. And pretty interesting. Oddly, my husband's mom, so my, my grandma lost her mom when she was, and she must have been about eight years old when she died. That has got to be rough. And my husband's mom uh, lost her mom when she was 14 to leukemia. Ah, I think it was a lot harder in, back then than it is now in some ways. Okay, now I'm going to put this shadowy face. Ooh, shadowy face. I better make an indication of something in there that fits a face. I'll give him a mustache or something. That would be good. Okay, I got a shadow like that. And then I'm going to take this. Put my little orange with my white. I hope you guys don't mind my stories. I did have somebody say that last week that they liked listening to me talk. And I hope they were into the art as well. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. well, I like listening to you talk. Oh, I'm glad. How wonderful, you know. Glad somebody does. That's awesome. Okay, now I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to kind of patch that across the hand. Now, at some point, uh, we'll have to let this dry. And we'll, you know, come back in and do some more at some point. But uh, isn't that cool? That's just really cool getting kind of a shadowy look. Okay, now I'm going to take this, I'm going to make this into a bit of a shadow feel over there, just loose, and the shadow down like that, and then we'll take that white again. I'm trying some new uh, white, it's called Flake White Replacement. Very, very stiff and very strong, uh, made by Gamblin. The original Flake White had a lot of lead in it, and, uh, you know, I can't imagine those guys cooking that stuff up. Oh, man, that would have been a little bit on the dangerous side. Oh, dear. Yeah. Okay. So I would normally put this into, um, at some point, into like a purpley zone. I'm going to connect up. Wait a sec. Okay. I'm just realizing there's this shadow here. This is actually lower. Here we go. Correct, correct, correct. Right there. You know drop that down a little bit lower so that I can fit the shadow in like that. Again, that's just part of the whole process. And then we come back in here, take that out like that, that out like that. that out. Oops, I'm going to drop that down so it's got a shadow there, no lines. Put it like this. Okay, now i got to check my time here. Oh my gosh, I'm almost out of time. All right, I am out of time. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. Again, let me know what you'd like to see. And don't forget to go on, of course, I'm going to say it, and subscribe and watch all those videos. There's about 135 of them. Uh, some of them are good. Some of them are good. All right. <laughs> you tell me which ones are your favorite. I'd like to know. And make some suggestions as to what you'd like to see next Thursday night. Oh, and if you're in McCall, don't forget, don't forget to come to my gallery opening on uh, Saturday, uh, October. What is it? Oh my gosh, what day is Saturday? Anyway, this Saturday uh, at, at Gallery 55 in McCall from 4 to 7, we have an evening of uh, art and I'll be there. Okay, so you can come and meet me and see me. Uh, see all my art and uh, that'd be awesome. Okay, and I think uh, it's almost time. Yes. All right. Love you guys and we will see you again next time. I hope I didn't forget anything. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. All right. Keep watching.